This is video three on the fundamentals of capture with your Medmon E300 corneal topographer. Start by creating a new patient. Click on the home and then new. Enter in your patient details. You can click on the pull down menu to scroll through to the month and day of birth. Then with your arrow key or with your mouse you can click on the year of birth and then enter in the appropriate year. Select the gender. If you're designing a E300 contact lens you can enter in the patient RX on this window. When you're ready click save you'll notice that the patient has been created on the left hand side. With that patient name highlighted, you're ready to capture topography. You can go up to the new exam and corneal topography. This will bring up your capture window. With the capture window up, you're focusing on the lower left video image. With the green crosshair, control the centration of the instrument's focusing point on the apex ring of the placido reflection. You can move your joystick nasal or temporal, you can rotate the joystick to lift the instrument up or down, but center that green crosshair on the apex ring. The red line tells you how close or far away you are from the patient. While the red line is at the top of the runway, we're too far away from the eye. While the red line is at the bottom of the runway, we're too close. When the instrument is near in position, it will automatically capture. In this case, we have a 99% as our rightmost image, 97 as our leftmost. You will ha always have four images captured. The rightmost will be your best percentage. Anything over 95% is considered accurate or valid by the instrument. However, you must determine if the placido reflection is showing any tear film breakup. Put your mouse on the rightmost image, right click with your mouse and select the zoom tool and zoom in on the central 10 to 15 rings. If they're reflecting parallel and even, that would be devoid of any tear film breakup and that is optimal for capture. We could save this image, however, notice the upper lid is crossing approximately 30% of the upper iris and the lower lid is crossing about 20% of the inferior iris. We should ask our patient to open up wider to get a larger fissure capture before we click the save button and save the image to the file. Let's clear these images by clicking on the clear button and go back in, ask our patient to open up wide center the green crosshair to the apex ring, look at the red distance indicator, moving the instrument closer or farther away, ask our patient to blink just prior to centering the instrument. If the placido looks like it's reflecting parallel and even, we'll go in. Notice we have 98% up to 99%. Our rightmost image looks like we have a large percentage of corneal coverage. We can right click, select the zoom tool, Zoom in on the central 10 to 15 rings. They all reflect parallel and even. This would be an excellent capture. So we'll click save to save that into the patient file. If your lower lid is crossing a lot of inferior iris, you can ask your patient to reach around and pull it down. Let's click clear images and see if we can completely eliminate the lower lid from our image. We'll ask our patient to blink just prior to capture to smooth out that tear film. Notice small little tear film breakups. We'll ask our patient to blink again. When you see a clear posito, you can move in and take your capture. By pulling down on the lower lid, you can move that lid off the cornea and get a little more inferior ring reflection. The upper lid you can't pull back because the patient must maintain normal blink and normal refreshing of tear layer. 
Let's zoom in on these central rings. We can see we've got nice parallel ring reflection. Uh, doesn't appear that we have any tear film breakup, although this area may show a little bit of a distortion and therefore possibly the start of tear film breakup. If we reset this image and zoom in on those inferior rings, notice this area is starting to show a little bit of distortion. This area showing a little bit of clarity lost along this ring. So this is the kind of tear film breakup where we are going to try to avoid. Ask your patient to blink just prior to capture and then move in when you see the placido reflecting parallel and even. Let's again focus in on that video image. We'll put the in instrument near into position with the green crosshair. You can see there's a little bit of tear film breakup various points. We'll ask our patient to blink to smooth that out. When it's smooth, you can go in and take your capture. This concludes the section on capturing with your Medmont E300 corneal topographer.